What's up world, happy Friday. It's Dr. Gilgem here doing a live video here as we have done in the past on Fridays to edumacate you on a different topic. And today we're gonna to be talking about posture. And I've gotten a lot of requests to discuss this recently being that people have been working from home obviously with all that's going on and they've been finding that they are in some discomfort specifically in the upper back but also in the lower back as well too just depending on what type of posture you're using. So in the more and more that I look at research and study the various mechanisms of injury and things that happen to us one thing is always reoccurring and it's that when we are using poor posture meaning that we're slouched forward or we're humped underneath like that what we're doing is we're really placing our joints and our musculoskeletal system in a lot of jeopardy to potentially have some injuries that are occurring and also what you're doing is you're chronically kind of weakening some of these spinal stabilizing muscles which over time makes you more susceptible to an injury because your muscles, your joints are not able to respond as quickly to the stressors placed on your body. And so <clears throat> the number one thing, if you've followed me for any amount of time that I tell patients is to draw an imaginary line between your ear hole or your lobe, your shoulder and your hips. And you want that line to basically be straight up and down. When it's straight up and down, your spinal curves are the way that they should be to distribute weight evenly throughout your body and to balance kind of the symmetry of the body, the muscular system, the joints, etc. And so that imaginary line, whenever you're sitting and doing work for long periods, if you find yourself humped forward or anything like that, picture that line. And if that line's not just straight up and down, your spine is out of alignment. Literally, it's moving forward. It's not the way that it should be. And so doing that, you're also going to be starting to strengthen your muscles and everything like that. So I have some stats here on posture and just why it's important. And normally when people kind of see these things, they tend to be like, oh, oh crap, that actually matters to me. Um, and so one of the things that, that you'll notice is that uh, if you type in posture into Google, it's got over 150 million responses. So people are looking for ways to improve posture or, or, or mnemonics or reminders that help them remove or you know improve their posture. So it's no question that it's obviously something people are worried about. So some key points from research that I looked at is that forward head posture or when we're like this looking forward on our phones, on our computer, on our video game systems, it is one of the main reasons for neck and upper back pain and it affects an, an estimated 75% of human beings. That's a crazy big amount of people. Another thing is too that neck pain, stiffness, tension, any sort of chronic neck pain or upper back where you feel just feel like your muscles are tight or if you're having headaches that are relieved once you're sitting upright or headaches that come about when you've been sitting forward more. These are all things that are sign of chronic forward head posture, tech neck, tech neck, all of that sort of deals. Another thing to note is that trapezius strengthening or trap strengthening, your trap muscle that's up in your upper back, it actually connects right at basically the base of your skull and goes down to the upper middle part of your back. This is a muscle that has clinically been shown to both cause some of these problems we have up here because it affects both your neck and upper back, but also it can give you a lot of relief when you do strengthening for that because when we're forward like this all the time, that trap isn't engaged or activated. And so by stand or by sitting or standing upright like this, you're actually activating that trap muscle. And so it's able to strengthen and support your upper back muscle. So strengthening that muscle has been shown to clinically re re provide relief for those struggling with neck pain as well as um, some of that forward head posture. So good posture, like I said, keeps those spinal curves aligned, which will also help prevent degeneration and arthritis down the road. It keeps your weight evenly distributed, uh, which is more important as you go down the spine, but obviously in the upper in the neck, it's, it's vital as well too. It cuts down on the wear and tear of your joints. Um, it, it helps prevent back pain, obviously. Tech neck is a term that we use to describe the flex forward position of our neck. Normally we have a nice curve in our neck like this. And when we go forward, that curve straightens out, which places a lot of pressure on the nerves and joints of the area and causes that wear and tear. So 
um, like looking down at your smartphone or at your computer, I always encourage people to have that at eye level or just below eye level because that stops you from having your head forward. So when I'm texting, looks goofy maybe, dig your elbows into your side and hold your phone up like this. And that's your, your future self is going to thank you. If you want to look cool now and have your phone down at your waist, then go ahead and do it. But you'll be seeing me down the road with some neck pain. A stat that, that I've said before about kind of your head being a bowling ball and a toothpick is that even 15 degrees of forward head tilt, which is not a lot if you think about it, can increase the stress of and weight and tension that's dispersed throughout your neck by three times. Normally they say that for every 10 degrees forward you go is an extra 10 pounds of weight that's going through your neck. If that's not enough to scare you into sitting upright and, and using good posture, I don't know what is because at some point that's going to catch up to you. That's a lot of extra weight dispersed through the toothpick on the bowling ball that's on your head. And so make sure that you're doing it if for no other reason. I always say that the nuns in the old school schools who would slap your wrist when you were when you were slouched over or, over or whatever, while the medium for punishment probably wasn't correct, they were onto something because they probably saved those kids a lot of future neck pain. Probably a lot of current wrist and hand pain, but future neck pain was uh, was reduced. So some of the things that I like to encourage people to do that can help with this right away, the how do I apply this to my life, is take breaks. Every 15 so minutes, take breaks, get up, walk around, do some flexibility, stretching, work your neck, work the mobility of your joints of your spine. Uh, and, and the big one too is that uh, you don't have to be on your smartphone or your phone all the time. Unless you're some sort of serial entrepreneur where all your business goes through your phone or tablet, I would really encourage you to take breaks from your, your cell and your tablet, your computer, because not only, I won't even get into all the other side effects for that, but from a biomechanical standpoint, that is going to help you tremendously with your neck where you're not going down in your upper back, you're not looking down. So take breaks every 15 minutes. I always say if you're drinking a ton of water, you're always going to the bathroom and that forces you to take breaks right away. Uh, unfortunately, slumped posture has been linked with depression symptoms, which might be why, this is totally me shooting out in left field, but it might be why when you see people in a traditionally sad state or you know when you look at somebody, you go, that person's sad, they're walking around like this, slumped posture, is associated with depression symptoms. You notice that if people are walking proud chested and upright, good posture, they just look happier. They look like they're proud, like they're confident, they know what's going on and everything like that. So sometimes you trick your mind into doing it, but also maybe if you're not in pain, you're not as depressed too. There's a lot of factors at play here, but more of the story is don't use slump posture. Um, and also uh, on that same note, an upright posture has been shown in the research to improve mood. So that's pretty neat as well too. If you want a little mood boost, roll your shoulders back, walk upright, all of a sudden you feel like you rule the world. I mean, that just happened to me right now. It's tremendous. And lastly, emotions and thoughts affect your posture and energy level, whether you think so or not. So look up, pull your shoulders back, reset your mind and body. I know that when you're doing work, you get in the zone, you're forward, you're, you're, you're just in the zone of typing or doing some sort of work. Anytime you start to feel that achiness up there, when you reset and roll your shoulders back, immediately you'll start to feel some relief. And so if you're able to hold that and do that for a long period of time, not only are you going to strengthen those spinal stabilizing muscles like we talked about, but also you're going to be resetting your mind and body, kind of just giving yourself a recheck on your health and, and kind of your focus, which is, which is vital to doing work. So hope that some of these have helped you. Again, a reminder, those tips and tricks, but also to draw that straight line between your ear, shoulder, and hips, and that's going to go a long way towards helping you out. So if you are working from home right now and feel like you benefited from this or know somebody who could, go ahead and share it, and uh, we'll see you soon. Everybody stay safe out there and use good posture.